Hello and welcome back for the third and final episode of our Blades in the Dark Let's Play. Uh, if you have joined us for the first time, then please make sure that you have hit subscribe so you can see all the other stuff that we do here on this channel. But we are going to be finishing off this epic, epic heist uh, here in the manor of Lord Skurlock, or at least we were in the manor of Lord Skurlock, because it seems like something has gone awry. Would anyone like to fill in the audience on what happened last time? It's all the clown's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are multiple clowns in this group, so well, which one? Gosh. Um, after being apprehended by Lord Skurlock, uh, we were actually invited to dine with him. Uh, despite the fact he suspected we had ulterior motives, um, revealing that the vessel of the old gods that we are looking for is actually just him, um, we sort of realised there was a bit of a snag in our great plan to sneak past Lord Skurlock and pinch the, the item, because the item is, of course, him. But uh, talking of sneaking around, um, an, uh, a precocious little uh, street urchin, shall we say, went and blew up a ballroom. Uh, which angered Lord Scarlock a fair amount. Uh, he was just on his way to go bust, said child, when uh, when the clown blew up the toilet, uh, which also annoyed Lord Scarlock. Um, and just to top it off, uh, as Lord Scarlock was in the ballroom being angry at the state of said ballroom, uh, he got stabbed in the back. Uh, quite literally. Uh, at this point, he decided, you know what? I've had enough of this. Let's go into some form of nightmare realm. So he he sort of transported us all there and was like, lol, laters, good luck. I'm going to leave now through this portcullis and you're probably going to die here. Yeah. Is that, is that about sum it up? Yeah, so we're, we're in the floaty land. Well, it's not floaty anymore. It's just a tower, yeah, isn't it's, it? Um... Um, formed into some kind of strange arcane tower um, and you like after a while you come to terms with the fact that the entire existence around you was warped into something different uh, and the, the, start to actually look around gonna, the count's gonna look around and he's gonna say well I think that pre pretty well <laughs> don't you saying uh, talking as someone who just blew up a ballroom you are an idiot <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have brought the child. I'm not the one who stabbed Lord Skurlock in the back. You blew up the ballroom, child. It was full of ghosts. The Count stands up and looks around at you and says, You know what? I've been called Clown Brian. I don't know what name that is. <laughs> and now an idiot in the space of a single night. And yet... I will not hold that against you, because I'm a very good-natured fellow. You're a prick Come on. Old. Come on now, we don't need to fight and argue and blame anymore. But I was, I was protecting you, my, my young friend. Looks down at you, Lucas. He was going to find you and do all sorts of awful things. How was I supposed to know that a person who was stabbed in the back wasn't going to die from that sort of thing? That's usually what happens. I mean, he seems quite incredibly powerful, doesn't he? Uh, well, just, you know, small details. I mean, uh, look, maybe I spoke rashly. We, you know, I have I did some bad stuff. You've done some bad stuff. I think we can all agree Pilfers here is blameless. It's just... <laughs> we've had a bit of a day. We're in a bind. We should try and get out of here. You don't... Uh, Turning to Lois, I'm so sorry, I've forgotten your character's name. Edna. Edna. Turn to Edna. I don't suppose the uh, the hoity toity act would work if you tried it again? Well, it's gone now, isn't it? Well, yeah, but I thought you, I thought you were mates. <laughs> How was dinner? He seems mad at me because uh, he seems to think I was trying to tell him what to do, which I wasn't. I was. Mm. Trying to take the workload from him uh, by dealing with you, but he didn't go for it. Is that so like when think... you make constructive suggestions as to how I might pull my socks up? 
Now, I did say we need to stop this bickering. Come on, we're, we're in some sort of alternative dimension. I don't see a door anywhere except for up there. And I don't know about you, but I can't exactly fly last time I checked. Would you like to look around, by the way? I've, uh... Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah let's, have a, let's have a look around. So you, you've all sort of, like, convened here to, to chat again. Um, and this, this, like, tower that you're in is, is enormous. Um, it it sprawls upwards and upwards and upwards uh and probably even larger than the ballroom itself is the is the base of said thing that you are sat on right now it seems to not be built for humans there are no stairs up to the doors there are just various exits from this chamber um just sort of laden across uh the upwards and upwards walls that you see around you um in the center of the room uh on a sort of stone platform, a uh, circular stone platform made of cobble, uh, there seems to be some kind of wooden altar, uh, some kind of table. Um, and as you look at it, you sort of double take a second as you realize it's almost flickering. Almost like it's not really there, like it's something that um, existed in the other dimension but not here, or perhaps is stuck between them. Hmm. Curious. Uh, yeah. So wait, this table's this table is on the floor with us. Yeah, I mean you're not next to it. It's in the center of the room. You'd have to walk over to it. Okay. But it's um, yeah, it's very easy to get to. Yeah, Sebastiano is gonna walk over there. Uh, Sebastiano, do you have, have anything in the tune? Do I have anything in a who in what? The tune, the action, a tune. Oh. I can carry oh, you're one. asking me. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were asking me your instrument. <laughs> um, do I have anything in it? A tune? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Um, I will allow you to push yourself, but I need you to make an a tune roll. So you can either roll two dice and take the worst result, or you can push yourself with two stress and roll one die. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with stress. I haven't got any yet. Somehow, oh, yeah. <laughs> must be nice. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, I've I've escaped it, despite the fact that you know certain things have happened or may not have happened. So uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so I'm rolling one die. Mm -hmm. Just one die, just one. Just one die. I like that you didn't use stress when you tried to stab the immortal <laughs> demon lord in the back no, but to I investigate a table. Up. Yeah, well, I don't know what could be under that one. table. Oh, that's a two. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, not wow. great. Um, I'll say. As you walk over, you are enraptured by the. Love that table. Mm. Not the table itself, but the energy around it. It seems. It okay. seems to be. Yeah, not the table. <laughs> uh, Fine. Such fine mahogany oh, the carvings. Wood. <laughs> the gorgeous deep wood. Uh, as you walk over it, there seems to be apparitions sort of floating around it. Um, and you can't really work out what they're doing, what's happening, but like you see almost human figures. It's almost like a, a memory that's been uh, stuck in one place and has had an impression on the space around you. There are small points of activity where you Something important happened here, but you just can't work out what it is. Yeah, I seem strangely drawn to this this table. Uh, it, I don't really understand what's going on with it, but I suppose it's in line with roughly what's been going on tonight. Uh, like a ghost bomb it. <laughs> um, I don't know whether that would help the. I don't know whether it's ghosts. There's just some sort of energy. I'd like to take the blade that I have and go over and stab the table. Stab the table. See it. Now <laughs> see if anything happens. You're going to carve Edna in it like a school Edna desk. Edna was here. <laughs> um, okay, that's fine. I won't make you roll for that. So, you, yeah, you walk over to the table. Wait, that's me. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to the table, yes. You walk over to the table, um, and as you get there, um, you start to, to see the same sort of strange apparitions uh, that the Count is experiencing. 
um, weird shadowy figures just sort of phase in and out of existence around you, and they seem to be culminating around this table. Uh, and just almost just to, to see what would happen, you bring out a, a blade and just stick it right into the wood. Um, and as you do so, like it almost phases through. Like there's a second where the blade meets no resistance, and then as the table seems to just jump back into reality, suddenly it stops and you feel you're it's stuck inside. Like without you ever actually piercing the wood, it seems to be part of the table now. Um, and you try to tug at it to pull it out, and suddenly as you're doing so, like your connection to the object is starting to make the apparitions a bit clearer. Like you understand a bit more what is happening here. And it, you look around you and you see actual faces. Like uh, people in, in hoods are sort of surrounding this table. Um, and as you turn back, you see that the blade is now not in the table, but in some kind of body. Um, it looks to be like a young man, like no more than sort of 19 years old or so. And the blade is stuck in the chest. Uh, and as you look down at yourself, weirdly, you feel like you're wearing one of the robes of the people around you. And you look, and, and it's almost like you've stepped into someone else's memory. Like you're experiencing what they were doing. You don't really feel like you have any agency over your own actions. But suddenly, it's not just sight, it's sound. You can hear chanting and murmuring. You can see the uh, particles of energy just sort of sifting off of the uh of the of the man's skin as the the blade seems to ripple some kind of strange energy through him Un not unlike the power that you saw come out from the feet of Skurlock himself when he put us into this place um mm -hmm. and as you step back grabbing for the blade in shock suddenly it all goes back to normal and the table seems to have settled in this reality with the blade still stuck inside and although you can't see the apparitions anymore, you feel like the table has some kind of significance to this place. What's, uh, you okay? You stabbed a table and then now you look funny. Um, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful Nothing to read into there. <laughs> Did you, uh, um... no, I'll be like, a, I was transported to another place. Well, it was here, but there was people in cloaks, and I was wearing a cloak, and I didn't feel like I was me, but, yeah. What were you doing? Stabbing a man in the chest. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> um, why? Do you know, do you have any idea why? I don't know if it was some kind of ritual or some. There was it, there was that purple stuff that came from the sexy man's feet came from the chest <laughs> that I was stabbing. Oh. Doesn't have a name. Lord just sexy, the sexy man. man. <laughs> Lord sexy man. Yeah. Now, stick with me on this one, but. Earlier on, when he was coming to tell me off for exploding a ballroom, he said that I wanted to be the new vessel, which is weird, because I thought it was something we had to nick. He is the vessel. Did You you missed that bit, didn't you? <laughs> so Sorry. Oh, He's he the what? He is the vessel. Yes, we may have forgotten to mention that part. He said at dinner that he is, in fact, the vessel, yes. Right. So when I asked how was dinner... <laughs> no, you're right. We shouldn't be squabbling. Um, Rufus had grapes. Aww. Oh. Uh, can, I, can I very quickly flash back and say that I saved <laughs> yeah, one of the sure. grapes and I now hand it to Inko? <laughs> Do you know what? I won't oh. make you take stress for that one, Matt. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, Alright, well... Is it possible <laughs> that the um, stabbing is to do with becoming the vessel? By Jove, I think you've got it! <laughs> but why would 
would he re- accuse you of becoming the vessel rather than the person who stopped him? He said I had special blood or something. I do remember him saying that. It was very weird and creepy at the time, but <laughs> but uh, perhaps... It's very sexy, if you ask me. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not any less creepy now we're standing around an altar talking about stabbing. I, I want it to be very clear I'm not volunteering here. <gasps> yes! Yes! Let's lay you on the desk and let's stab you and see what happens. <laughs> I really don't think that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, I yeah I've, I've had... It's been quite a day. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've noticed what I you point to all of the glass in my face. <laughs> like, it's been... I'm fine, by the way. Yeah, that's well, that's good. you know. Um, I assumed as much. It's not that we didn't care. It's just that we've been, we've been very overwhelmed by all these I'm not, things. I mean, it's, when you when we saw that you had glass in your face, to be fair, um, clown number two did stab a god into the back, so we were a bit distracted. Mm, I suppose eating grapes is hard work. While all this is going on, can pilfers just put a hand on Inko's shoulder and then after Inko says about not not wanting to be stabbed and then Pilfers just starts to lay back on the desk. <gasps> oh. But you don't have special blood or special powers. Yeah, I, I really don't think anyone needs to be oh. st- <laughs> needs to be stabbed. Yeah, sorry today. Pilfers, I'm not I'm not gonna shiv you just to make you feel better. <laughs> just wouldn't feel right. Especially after last. Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, can we... we? I mean, options: stay here, stab one another, <laughs> or try and I climb like up. One. Try and climb up. See if we can find something else, and or information about whether or not we need to be stabbed. How about you start climbing, and when you fall, then we can try the stabby thing. I'm going to look over there and see if there's anything else on this particular level of this tower before maybe we start attempting to to scale it. I am going to get some climbing gear out, though, and start rigging myself up to make an ascent. Can I see anything else apart from the the table? The walls are pretty barren apart from the exits. Um, There is one that's probably about, you know, twice the height of you, Count. Um, uh, far away. You could you could maybe climb to it. There is a strange sort of misty light just sort of um, spilling out of the door as if it's leading somewhere uh, that's a bit more well lit than this dusty and dank tower. Um, mm. But without stepping inside, it would be difficult to say how or where it goes. Um, no, um, Oh there, I see a door. Oh, there, you there. boy. Uh, <laughs> you boy. So ho. There, 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 there is a door over there. Uh, maybe we could avoid, you know, uh, falling to our deaths uh, and give that a go first. Okay. Okay, so Sebastian leads the way there. Is it, did you say it's like above? the the floor level. Yeah, so all of these doors are like, imagine just like one big cylinder that you're in the middle of. The doors are just sort of like Mm. spotted around the wall in random orientations. Um, So this nearest one is... nearest one is is probably about twice your height away from you. Okay. Um, Would I be able to give um, give Lucas a kind of boost up? Yeah, if you want to help, so that would be one stress. If you want to add to add to Lucas' roll. Um. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, go on. I'll I'll offer a hand and be like, uh, "Here you go. Uh, this should help you get up there, hopefully." <laughs> you say to the kid with climbing gear. <laughs> it was going to scale the whole place. <laughs> I'm just being nice. Okay, um, so uh, I would like to make a tinker roll, and I'll tell you for why. Um, I feel like um, he, like Inka's probably, uh, Inko's spent a lot of time tinkering with, like, you know, pitons, like the little things you sort of push in, where ones are, like, 
it's almost like a little blade with a cog on the end and he kind of turns it so he can slip it in there and then just like and expand them out to make like a little foothold for himself because he's cool because <laughs> he's very cool uh, this is very <laughs> cool so You've have I got an extra die, yeah. die as well for the help great okay so this should be fine uh, nice that's a six. six. Yeah, so you, hey. you see these small contraptions just being shunted into the wall and twisted, and you see Inco just sort of like testing their sturdiness, and they seem pretty solid. Uh, and he makes like a sort of almost makeshift ladder that he just climbs up. Um, probably a little bit easier for him given his small stature, um, but Inco manages to scale up onto the to the platform, uh, and you just see him looking into. Uh, what Inko sees is a, a strange sort of misty light. Um, and as you look into it, it's almost like you can see a whole nother reality. Um, but as you're watching, you see this small child, uh, not that much older than you, um, who seems to be in some kind of poverty-stricken house. Uh, and one day, men arrive at the door, they bang on the door, and as they open it, the child's face drops uh, and the parents of the child seem to be remorseful um, as one of the men at the door hands what looks like a bag of gold to the mother. But then after that, it just loops. Almost like it's just a, a flashback that's been stuck and just can't seem to get out of it. Uh -huh. Um, I'm going to sort of go to the edge and describe it to them. Like, it's um, blah, 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 blah. So if anyone wants to see a child being bought repeatedly, that's <laughs> <laughs> what that is. I do. do you think this is one of his memories? Yeah, I do, I do remember oh. when he brought us here, he said something about you've made me come here and brought up some bad memories. Maybe he meant that very literally. Oh. Oh. It's a memory tower. So. Yeah, one of those memory towers. I remember. <laughs> All the nobles have I mean, them. are they just... <laughs> well, what's the... What's the point in it? Is it a source of his power, or... Is Maybe. it something we can change? Can we go in there and say, don't buy the child? And then... just wants to I mess with like us. I thought stab you, and then if you're the vessel, then at least we can sell you and get that money. Can we... <sighs> I really think you need to stop this particular line of thinking, Edna. If it carries on, I'm afraid I'm going to have to do something about it. I just... Oh, such a bore. Look, if it's... Look, I'll, I'll level with you. Like, I, the job's not what any of us expected, I think it's fair to say, at this juncture. And eventually, sure, if it turns out me getting stabbed will turn me into this new vessel and I can transform things just by letting out a big load of purple gas, I'll be, you know what, you can, you can be the one to stab me. But could you maybe stop jumping straight to that <laughs> for a little bit? Can we just explore, we'll call it one or two more avenues <laughs> before anyone plunges a knife into my chest? Fine. I mean, I'm, I'm open to your opinions... And I respect you, Edna, but, you know, also. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, quite, well, quite. Well, um, <laughs> well, did you want to see if you can go into the room and do anything with that memory? Yeah, sure. sure. I'm going to try and st stagger into the room. Okay, can you make me some kind of roll? Uh, um, I would probably ask for a tune, but feel free to try something else. No, a tune sort of <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to roll for a tune, which I don't have. Roll two dice and take the worst so, result. I am. Please roll two sixes. I rolled a three okay. and a two. Oh. So, that's you bad. You try to like find a foothold in the mist, uh, and as you step through, um, like your foot just sort of plunges into it, and it feels icy cold. Like it's, it's uncomfortable. The cold doesn't just hit your skin, it seems to hit your bones. Um, and then suddenly all of the figures in the memory just turn their heads to you like you've disturbed them and you see especially the parents their jaws just seem to not open but just dislocate and as, as they start to scream towards you 
I mean, I don't want to become a one-trick pony here, Wheels, <laughs> but I think I'm going to drop a That's grenade. absolutely <laughs> fine, man. Just going to roll uh, it in like you're playing bowls. <laughs> yeah. I think, so the sort of plan is, just be like, uh, prick my finger, like, please go away, ghosts. Bonk, <laughs> chuck it, and then I want to sort of run... Oh, guys, don't look at explosions. For the, um, <laughs> I want to run back the way I've come and then start mm -hmm. sliding so that ideally my legs slip over and I can grab pitons and start okay. descending. Or I'll just hit the ground and I'll be thrown on a slab and stabbed. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I think Edna might well get her wish here. So... Uh, so I, this would be a rep sure, roll, yeah. I think. I'm going to... This is going to be, this is going to be a desperate Water. action. Yup. Cool. I'm not gonna push myself because I'm. I might save the stress boxes for a resistance roll. Okay. Oh, that's a six. Um, almost like, uh, almost like your body knows what to do before your brain does. Um, you find yourself already prepping your grenade, uh, and as they start <laughs> to lurch forward, reaching out to you, you just roll it and leg it. And as you slide, you feel like the, the pulse of heat of the explosion behind you, just as you slip over the edge. And the rest of the party just sees you just sort of like fall over, grab some pitons, and then just ghost explosion billows out of this, this hole in the wall uh, as this almighty, horrible chorus of screeches um, seems to uh, fill the tower and then dissipate. Um, and there is a deathly silence for a short while. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just panting yeah. on the wall, like tiny all, tilling yeah, it. All you can like... hear is like the stressful breaths of uh, Inko, uh, and then as they start to settle, you hear a voice from the top of the tower, which appears to be Skurlock. Um, although this time he seems more ethereal, like he's almost talking to you from the walls, and he says. What part of me have you destroyed? Ooh. The, the one with the bag of money! <laughs> there is always a price. Always a price, child. Remember that before you steal me. I think I've pissed him off. Why would he lock us in a place where we can destroy him? I think, did we force him? He seemed unhappy. Oh, maybe. Shall we keep doing it? As you're talking, you feel a slight rumble and just small sort of vats of dust seem to fall from the walls around you and small bits of stone just dislodge themselves and crumble onto the floor. And you feel a little less safe. <laughs> Okay. So, you're saying I should have stabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> come on now, come on, admit it. Out of curiosity, so is there a, is there a door within reaching height? J just stood on the floor? Um... Not on the floor, no. So that that was the closest one, uh, the one that um, okay. that Inko managed to crawl up to. If you did manage to climb up to where he is, there's one that's not too much further above you, above that door. Sorry. Sure, I think intrigued more than anything else, pilfers will wander across and just open the door and put their head inside to see see yeah, what's so you... going on. Having seen Inko. Come flying out of this You'll other door. You'll have to door. climb up first, so if you give me an action roll. Mm. Oh, sure. Uh, so that's finesse. I'll do, yeah, yeah. Finesse? Oh, I'd, I'd prefer something else, well, but I don't think can, anything else is going to... tell me why that action would be more suited, then go ahead. Uh, I, d I don't <laughs> think I can make that. Have you got some plungers? Like... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> They're a clown, not a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a four. Um... So it's definitely not an easy climb, uh, especially considering that 
you know, those pitons were not supposed to holding you know, hold full um, full <laughs> adult sized <laughs> legs. <laughs> Wow. Oh, the bloody balloons. Oh. Um, so as you as you climb up, a few of them dislodge themselves and fall to the ground, which makes it a lot harder for anyone else coming up here. Um, but you manage to grab one as it's falling, and then just sort of... I mean, you know, like your companion is a little bit too tired to show you how they work, but it, it, seems like, uh, it seems like it was pretty simple. So you manage to just sort of bridge the gap between the two tours with one and just twist it so you can pull yourself up um, and as you pull yourself up, you start to see that, that mist that I described earlier. Um, inside uh, of this door, there seems to be some kind of um, scene of... It looks like... Imagine, you know, like a, a castle on, on, a, on a hill with a lake around it kind of thing, like a, a moat. Um, but replace that castle with some kind of, uh, like, academy or um, some kind of... Um, you know, like a, a grounds with a, a large house, almost like a, like a school or or even maybe sort of like an old fashioned hospital or something like that. The strange thing that grabs you at, at first, you don't really realize it until you question yourself. The sun is shining um, as you look through it. Like this is a this is daytime. This is countryside. This you've literally never seen this in your entire life read about it in books but you didn't think it was real like the sun oh, yeah. is the sun <laughs> is like golden and spilling all over <laughs> spilling all over this building um and you see in the foreground uh, the child a little older now um although obviously it's you know it's news to you but you you from the from the information that you got from inco you sort of put two and two together uh and he looks off at the horizon, desperate to try and escape, but he knows, you can see in his eyes, he knows that if he took another step, there wouldn't be anything for him out there. And you just see him locked in this emotion, just staring out into the distance, just past your shoulder. Uh, I think, so <laughs> Pilfers will turn to the kid and just say, what's wrong? <laughs> what, is he in the memory then? Oh yeah, if I can clamber inside. You to walk into the memory. I think at this point, it sounds like I'm pretty pretty far in there, so yeah. Can you yeah. make me in the tune roll, please? Oh yeah, <gasps> I have one die in a tune. <laughs> it's our fantastic, best, it's our I rolled a two. two. You got a two, okay, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you step through the mist and feel cold just ache across you like as you step in here you're in physical pain but you try to talk to the child and say hi hey, is everything okay <laughs> um and he his head snaps to you and there is just terror across his face and, and he steps yeah. back and, and says who are you Pilfers. oh god <laughs> are you what they are you what they use to stop us escaping? No. Uh and then Pilfers just holds up a finger. And can I walk back to the door? Yes, from I'll, where I'll I came, or is it covered by mist? <laughs> sure. To see how much damage stepping into this place did. Okay, two. you're gonna take a two level again. two harm. Um you may Wonderful. try and resist it if you want. Uh, this would be with insight, I think. Because it's a brain thing. Let's... So, what's the downside of trying to resist something? If I roll poorly, I can take no, more harm. so it always works, but it's how much stress you take in exchange for it. So it will go, oh, I see. It will, it will Let's go not do one, that. But in exchange, <laughs> um, you would take up to five stress. Let's not do that, because I only have three stress <laughs> remaining. <laughs> and how many dice do you have in uh, in your insight column? One. Okay. One. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pilfers is not very insightful. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll accept yes. the level two Call harm, whatever chill. it may be. <laughs> okay, ghostly chill. Uh... Okay, but I make it through the mist yes. of the door. 
Can I beckon to the rest of the group to come join me? Yeah. If we I'd can like get to up that. there. I mean, like, wasn't the path partly destroyed? I think for, oh, partly. Um, by pilfers. <laughs> for Inko, it'll be fine because, like, the pitons were made for him, and I won't, I won't make Inko roll. Uh, for the other two, if you want to go and join pilfers, um, you'd have to take a, a pretty risky um, roll of some kind, probably finesse. <laughs> No, I'm going to wait by the table until the child appears. <laughs> you just sharply <laughs> you're you're ready. Ready. I'm like I'm like leaning against the table or against Sorry. the wall or something, just like waiting. <laughs> Picturing you picking your nails with a yeah. dagger. Just like, yeah. boy's got to come down sometime. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Only a matter of time. <laughs> um, Sebastiano gestures to Inca and be like, would you like to join him first? Yes. <laughs> go, go then. Thanks. You're, you're welcome. I, think I will so climb you, up. You see the same sight that uh, Pilfus is saying. Although, like when you see it, you see a confused boy, sort of like staring through, like they're trying to pick something out. Um. Sebastiano is going to attempt to climb up okay. there. Give me uh, some kind of uh, acrobatic roll. Going to use finesse. finesse. Would be absolutely fine. Yeah, <laughs> so be a risky standard. I got a five. Oh, um, I think by the time you get up, like the pitons at the at the bottom are, are pretty gone. Like unless you're in co, I don't think you're going to be able to be climbing up and down this wall very easily anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But you are now all, apart from Edna, who is just waiting to sacrifice a child, um, <laughs> you are all now sort of congregating by this, this strange sort of glimpse into the past. I I'm think... already writing on a grenade, P.S. Just just, just <laughs> racking one up. Just like... How many do you have? Goes to so, be gone. Uh... Yeah. Uh, grenades. Uh, at least one more, and then I could use okay. a second bandolier. Uh, so, what did you want us up here for, Bilva? Um, anything we can help Lou with, or...? Uh, I think I just gesture at the sad... sad boy. Do you want us to talk to him, or... Uh, I suppose other alternatives? They like certainly so. are available. Okay. <laughs> well, I suppose I could, uh, I could give it a go. Pilf Pilfer's not... Not the most comforting conversationalist. <laughs> hey, Pilfers. We've talked about this. You're great. Under very specific circumstances. Yes, I, I'm, sure the, 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 I'm, sh I'm sure the boy is just a bit startled by you. Let, let me see if I can I can do it a thing. So it requires an attune roll for mm -hmm. me to get through. I don't have anything in that, but I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> Just land well. Yay! That's two. Yeah. <laughs> Warp Just up the... swarm it up. Come on. Warm up, Chris. Um, as you start to step through, suddenly uh, the expression on the uh, the boy's face seems to turn from confusion back to horror again. As more shapes appear in front of him, he backs up, um, and just sorts to like as he as he falls down to the floor, tries to sort of crawl backwards away from you in horror, and then suddenly it loops again, and he's still at the bottom of the hill climbing up. Like it feels like you don't have much time to talk to this person. It's difficult to uh, okay. It's difficult to get much of a message across. So he's he, but he's climbing up now. He's coming back if you want to wait. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will. I will wait just in, until he spots me. So the longer you stay in this mist, you will take harm. Okay. So if you want to wait, I'll just I'll call it a level one for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just just put a uh, a spirit chill instead of a ghostly chill. <laughs> okay. Uh... How much harm do you have already, man? This is my first harm. Good. All right. So you yeah you've just got the one in one now, so it's not going to have an effect yet. Yeah. Um, but you, okay. you staunch yourself up for the for the cold and just sort of grab your body. And then as you mm. see the boy yep. return back up the hill, he spots you in the distance and cocks his head and shouts out and says, Hello? 
Oh, no. Someone there? Hello there! Um, hello there, my my young friend. Um, uh, I was hoping you would come. Uh, I I need to talk to you. What what are you? You you phase between real and unreal. I cannot comprehend you. I am a friendly traveler. Let's say I've come here to speak to you about something very important that might happen to you later in your life. I've very come well. to give advice to you. Would you like to, to come nearer? What advice would that be before I step closer, spirit? Um, uh, Sebastian, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna kneel down so he's more on the, the boy's level. Well, he's not that tall anyway. Well, he's, uh, he's a bit further he's... away from you now, so like he's he's not quite as um, like you wouldn't be able to meet his eye line straight away. It's almost like you're talking mm. across a you know a, a few feet of distance. Uh, and he's wearing he was wearing a you often he wears a mask, but he's going to take that mask off so the boy can see his face. It's a Zorro mask. <laughs> it is <laughs> exactly it is. Um, and he's going to say advice on the kind of decisions you might want to make when you grow older. Some things might happen to you. Things that aren't necessarily good. I wanted to warn you about those things. And speak your advice, spirit. As he, as he says that final line, you feel that you're the time of the loop is running out. You must be concise. Okay. Uh, he says, make up a time when when something strange happens to you. When someone tries to turn you into something that you should not be. I would say you resist that as much as you can. There will be people who try to harm you to turn you into something you are not that is not natural. You must fight back against them. I warn you, these people will be in cloaks. They will attempt to do some sort of strange, awful ritual. As you to are you. now reaching the end of the sentence, uh, the loop begins to reset itself, and you see okay. him once again at the foot of the hill, trying to climb up. Did I see any? Any? He heard. He me. understood I, did you I see definitely. You don't know okay. where. You don't know which part of the sentence he fell off at, but okay. it certainly had an effect on him. Uh, okay. it, see, it seemed to be like he knew what you were talking about already. Okay. Sebastiano's going to leave then, because there's no point going for the leap the again. The mist is starting to fade now. Like, the memory is changing mm -hmm. before you, but it's difficult to tell what it will turn into. Did I did I have to make a sway roll with that, by the no. way, or were you just happy no, for me fine. to talk? Okay. Uh, as you, okay. So as you walk away from the mist, um, you see a figure floating down from the ceiling, uh, and it appears Skurlock has returned. He seems different now, um, not in his demeanour or his elegance, but more just in the dead eyes of, of his expression are more now emotive. Like, you see a pain in him, you see a sadness in him. Oh. And as he floats down, arms outstretched, um, he stops briefly as he meets your eyeline and says, I remember now. I remember your faces. <laughs> it, ah, it brings me great embarrassment to admit that such a feeble visage of that mask would stop me recognizing you, spirit. Yes. I was the one who spoke to you. You remember now. Well, I must apologize, because I did not manage to meet your advice, as you may have wished. Though I did escape one day, they managed to change me, as you now see. Managed to change me in ways that I did not permit. Managed to put things inside of my soul that I did not wish to share this vessel with. You hear Edna from the other room. What's going on? <laughs> You're just below, so you can probably hear this. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> yes, so. Uh, well, I'd hoped that my advice would help you prevent that, but it seems it did not. Is there any different outlook you have? You know, Christianus, I've become tired. It is Christianus you go by now, is it? Brian. Right. I'm, I'm gonna say yes <laughs> I must say that the burden of having more than one soul in one's body certainly is one that I do not wish to carry on with perhaps I could lighten the load if it would mean that you would get out of this place yeah Ooh, uh, yeah I mean a way out would be very very much appreciated. Uh, could we help you uh, lighten the load? <laughs> <sighs> I offered you a choice in the dining room. I believe or meet your fate. It seems that choice is still available to you, just in a different way. So I will lay out your options once more. Either... I will provide with you the soul of a demon that lies beneath my flesh. But in exchange, that soul will need a new vessel to inhabit. As I'm sure you have alluded to, especially with your companion down there, it seems the boy is the only one capable. Your other option is to face me. In combat, though once again I will warn you, you will not see the end of that combat. Well, we're back to stabbing the boy again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to start walking toward the edge of the thing. No, no, come on now. I, I, uh, Sebastian is going to look at, at Lord Skurlock and say... If you wish to harm the boy, then I must insist. I cannot allow that. And he pulls his sword out from his scabbard and faces uh, the lord and says, You will have to go through me first before you get to our young friend. On guard! The boy will um, not be harmed, Edna, fool. Massive eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> Very disappointed. In fact, the boy will become more powerful than he ever has been in his entire life. Although it seems he holds a great power, as I feel my very self damaged by his devices. The choice is yours. If you wish to fight me, then see me at the bottom of this tower, where your very impatient friend waits for you. Otherwise, we should perform the ritual. I suppose it's really up to Inko. It's his decision. But how old are you? Me. Yeah. There is no measurement for the amount of time I've spent on this sphere. All right. You seem fed up now. But approximately what percentage of that unguessable time has been fun? It's a good question, boy. <laughs> good question. Life... Is a difficult thing like to measure. Like a hurricane. <laughs> what? Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Life is not an easy thing to measure. But I will say that I have lived a life of luxury. I have lived moments of happiness. And if this could potentially bring forth the end of said life, then I would be happy. Because I do think that it has been fulfilling shall we say. Yeah. But the way in which All right, you... that's me sold. All right, well, fair enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest with you, it sounds like either I, I choose to end my life now by fighting you, doesn't sound great, or I can choose to have it ended later in much the same manner as you're doing now and um, enjoy a life of luxury in the meantime. So, stick a demon in me, I guess. Yeah! <laughs> I'm well. so happy. Very well. Uh, he swings a hand out again and you, 
all of you at the at the door feel like a force pushing you out of it. Uh, are you really sure you want to? Are you sure you don't want me to fight him, Binko? Are you are you really sure you? Uh, he he sort of floats the group of you down to where Edna is standing by the table. I'm just I mean... like holding my arms up. <laughs> yes, come to Edna. <laughs> come here. Um, oh, no offense, Count, but it didn't exactly go brilliantly last time. Like swimming down <laughs> to Edna. <laughs> I mean, I, I got the jump on him. Yeah. And that's all you did. You, you don't know what other tricks I have my my sleeve. Is one of them kicking sand into his eyes? <laughs> it's all right if it is. Yeah. I, knew, <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have told him about that story. <laughs> um, you all float down and find yourselves <laughs> surrounding <laughs> this table. Um, apart from Inko, of course, who has been laid flat against the altar, you see sweat against his brow, uh, despite the fact that he has seemed normal sweat. To his... <laughs> yeah, normal sweat, not sticky sweat. Despite the fact that he seems to have accepted his fate, um, and Skurlock uh, looms above him, he holds out a hand to Edna, who is already excitedly wielding a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> and says, may I borrow that, my lady? Like, my shoulders just slump and I'm like, oh, baby, <laughs> fancy the dagger. Hope to have the honours. He holds it. Pilfers is in floods, by the way. Oh. Real oh. floods. Of tears. But the, rem- the last remnants oh. of makeup have been washed off his face. Oh. Uh, and Skurlock holds it out in front of him and skewers himself in the chest wrenching the dagger down and as he does that almost like a portal opens uh, from his sternum and that blue light just shines out from him he pulls the dagger back out again and then holds himself above the boy Inko you're laying there watching this dagger almost in slow motion as if it's about to fall down on you if there's anything you want to do now would be the time (laughs) Drop a grenade. I don't think I'd survive a grenade. (laughs) (laughs) Eh, I'm cool with it. Yeah? I hold the child down. (laughs) Oh my goodness, Lodi. I was waiting to see if he wanted to escape. Lodi, take take one stress for helping. Um, (laughs) 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 The moment, like, you have a moment of decision of, is this what I want? And you decide it is. And as the Mm. dagger plunges down into your chest... Uh, the great light pours out down the arms of Skurlock and into your body, and all of you see um, like a, a font of bright energy just pouring out of every pore of skin uh, in Inko. Uh, his eyes burning like lasers. Um, this happens for about five odd minutes, and you are like physically like a, like a helicopter is landing in front of you you're physically having to stop yourself being blown away uh, as like your hair and and bits of uh, rubble are just pl- flying past you as wind is just pushing you all balloons. the way the balloons float up into the They're tower gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sebastiano has a, wears a cloak so it's going it's like billowing <laughs> yeah um, and suddenly it just drops and you are in black darkness And as you all open your eyes after finding them closed, you see yourself in the atrium again. In its old dilapidated state. Um, And you look over to the side where Skurlock once stood, looking upon you as you entered this mansion. And you see those purple eyes shining again, though dimmer now, like a portion of them has been lost. As he turns and walks away. And the doors swing open to the side of you, showing the exit out of the building. All of you turn to Inko and see something strange and not right with him. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you you okay there, my my young friend? Better than ever? All there? Everything's there? 
Yeah, it's still there. Okay. Um, I suppose we can leave now. Yeah. I mean, I assume I can. Mm. Well, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's test that theory then. And Sebastiano leads everyone toward the door. You all walk out and almost like hesitating to take the first step out of the front door. You just hover your foot over the, the paving stones. But as you slap it down, it does seem to hit ground. And there's a sigh of relief around you as you feel that we free from this place. And just as you had hoped, walking down those steps, you seem to be pushed back out into the streets of Dustfall. As if nothing had ever happened, and yet you know that amongst the very number of your crew, a demon lies in wait. <laughs> I look up at everyone, and with like a big beaming smile on my face, I say, I'm worth loads of money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody, for playing Blades in the Dark. Hey! Oh, hello. Uh, we got a demon oh, child demon. Johnny if we are ever to play again I would ask you to change your playbook into the vampire class <laughs> cool yes please wow you're a vampire child okay uh, that was Blades in the Dark thank you very much everybody for watching and thank you to Lolis, me and Matt Jarvis and Johnny Keenini for playing did everybody have a thank good you, time Wills. yes thank, thank you very much for running it Thanks, Will. Uh, if you've enjoyed Blades of the Dark, then it is available online right now. It's by John Harper. Um, you can find it on itch.io as well as all of the other uh, places where you buy RPGs. It's available for physical print as well, I think. If you would like to see more Blades in the Dark, we actually did a little Christmas adventure before on the channel in which Alexander Lodis plays a Christmas elf. Yes, you heard me right. Um, <laughs> if you would like to see more videos in general, though, please click on one of the links at the bottom of this video right now to see some of the fantastic content that we have to offer on this channel. But not only that, we've also got an incredible wealth of stuff, so you should probably hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when we put anything live. If you want to see more of Matt Jarvis and Alex Meehan, they are on the video channel, but they're also the runners of our website, dicebreaker.com. We have all kinds of amazing editorial content uh, from themselves and our guest writers and contributors as well, uh, including interviews and Let's Plays and reviews. We've got loads of fantastic stuff coming up on the site, so make sure you get on over there. And if you want to support the channel, then you can head on over to dicebreaker.myshopify.com to pick up some amazing merch as well. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a spooky, dark-filled day, and we'll see you soon. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no.